Welcome back to Round the Bases to a Better Marriage. We're going to dive into the second inning, which is titled Communication. So open up your study guide and follow along. Communication. It's a long word. It has a lot of syllables. And in life, it can be exhausting. Men often think and communicate using our left brain, and women often think and communicate using their right brain. And often, there's an impasse, and the way that we think and communicate, it's on two different planets. A guy came home from work, and his wife left him a note. And on the note, it said, Honey, can you go to the store, and can you buy these items? Let me read them to you. It said, can you go to the store and buy a loaf of bread, number two, a watermelon, number three, a gallon of milk, and number four, a large bag of dog food. Number five, and this is my favorite, can you buy a rotisserie chicken that's pre-cooked? Oh, I love those things. I could eat them right there in the store. And so off he goes. He takes the list and Mr. Left Brain, and he's gone. And she comes home from work, and she notices the note is missing and gone, so she's assuming he's at the store, which he is. And she trusts him because he's brilliant. He's a smart guy. He's like an architect. And he thinks with his left brain. But all of a sudden, he's gone for like an hour or two, like far longer than he should have been. And she starts to worry. And all of a sudden, he walks in and he's got all these bags of groceries. And then he goes back out and he gets another group of bags of groceries. And now she's confused. And she's like, what is all this? And they kept coming. And all of a sudden, he gets them all gathered in the kitchen. And she goes, honey, what is all of this? And he goes, what do you mean? I got exactly what you asked. And he pulls out the note. And it said, one loaf of bread, two watermelons, three gallons of milk, four large bags of dog food, and five rotisserie chickens. And he bought it all. Mr. Left Brain thought with his left brain, really? And that encaptures marriage. That encaptures our challenges. That encaptures the difficulty of communicating. And I want to dive into this with you. And as you look at your study guide, a famous quote that we've all heard probably hundreds of times growing up is, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. The truth is, that's a lie. You see, your bruises go away, and your bones heal. But often it's the words that we choose with those that we love the most, and it's the words that we choose with them that hurt the most. Why do we do it? Why do we let the words roll off our tongue when we're angry and we're bitter and we're hurt, we're tired? Words matter. And the Bible has a lot to say about words. And so number one, words can build up. Words equally have the power to destroy, but they also have the power to build up, as the Bible says, that words can be healing. Proverbs 12, 18 says that words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. And as we grow up in our faith and we grow up in our marriage, our words need to grow up with us. The words that we choose need to mature as we mature as Christians, as husbands and as wives. Words matter. Words have the ability to make somebody feel valued. Words have the ability to bring healing to a situation. I remember when I was in college, a couple times some really tragic things happened with a couple of my friends that betrayed me. And I'll never forget, I called my dad. And he lived about an hour away, and I was kind of sharing with him my anger and my frustration. And I'll never forget over the phone, my father, he gave me amazing words of comfort. And all of a sudden, at the end of that phone call, he said, Matt, let me pray for you. And over the phone, my father prayed for me. And those words healed my soul. The loving care and the kind words from my father mattered. How about you? Are you using those kinds of words in your marriage, in your family? Words matter. And the second thing it says in Proverbs, in Proverbs 16, 24 is, Gracious words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and here it is, healing to the bones. 
Words are powerful. I'm going to encourage you to pray that God continue to mature you in your ability to use words to offer healing to your spouse, words to offer encouragement, words to help your spouse heal in areas that have nothing to do with you. I remember one time a guy's wife was really upset and broken over the way her family was treating her. And her knee-jerk reaction was to run away from the family. And I remember the husband came alongside of her and he offered her these comforting words. He said, baby, no, we're not going to run away from your family. We're not going to cut ties. He said, we're going to love them. We're going to love them so much that it makes them feel uncomfortable. And I'm going to be right by your side. And God's going to be with us. And he took her and he brought her into his chest and he held her. And that's exactly what they did. And years down the road, her dreams were met. And the family started to come around her like she never thought they would. And her husband offered her healing words. And that's what I want to encourage you to know. Secondly, words can destroy. Our words have an equal power of positive as they do negative. They have equal power. They have an equal impact for good and for bad. And as I could interview you and find times in your life where someone spoke words that cut and hurt and wounded you, I could probably also find times in your life where somebody spoke words that were powerful and healing. And words, 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 words matter. As it says in Proverbs 18.21, the tongue has the power of life and death. There it is. Equal power. Our words have equal power. Your words to your children, words to your spouse, words to your friends. And those who love it will eat its fruit. And then it says in James 3, 8, no human, no human can tame the tongue. None of us can. Our flesh, our anger, our sin nature. It said it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And that's true without Christ. That's true without Christ in our life. We're hopeless. But through the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, I can change. I can grow up. And that's what I want you to do. Go on a quest. Identify your communication pattern and take it to the cross. Commit to it. Say, Lord, uh, give me the ability to offer words of healing, words of healing, words of healing. Give me the ability to bite my tongue until it bleeds. Hey, God, give me the ability to no longer let acid or poison or venom spew out of my mouth. Hey, God, would you just silence me? I want you to know that I've had to pray that prayer in my marriage. I've had to grow up. And God, He's helped me, and He can help you. Number three, words reflect the soul. Words reflect the soul. Words reflect what's really going on in me. It's interesting, as I have grown in my faith, there's times where, as a Christian, I would get into an argument or get into a fight, and I would let words fly. And later, I'd go back and I'd review how I said it and what I said. I'm like, man, there's not an ounce of God in that conversation. There's not an ounce of Christ in those words that I chose. And they're reflecting my soul, areas in my heart that I got to take to the cross, areas in my heart of bitterness, areas in my heart of sin that I've got to take to the cross. And I got to grow up in my faith. As it says in Luke 6, 45, a good man brings good things out of, out of our hearts that are stored up, but an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in our hearts. And for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You see, the problem isn't communication. We don't have a communication problem. We don't have a word problem. We don't have a wordsmith problem. We have a heart problem. And there's only one hope. There's only one Savior. There's only one answer that can fix that. And His name is Jesus. Hey, Lord, help me, will you? Hey, God, help me. My spouse can't change me. Pam can't, can't help me. I can't change her, but God can. And I'm going to ask you to submit your tongue to the Lord. To submit your tongue to the Lord. Say, hey, this is yours, God. 
convict me, change me, grow me. And in James 1.26, it says, Those who consider themselves religious, yet we do not keep a tight rein on our tongues. We deceive ourselves. And our religion is worthless. Hey, that's dark. That's deep. That's heavy. If I don't have a tight rein on my tongue, it says that my religion is worthless. And that's why I want you to take this session serious. And as you round the bases and you look at maybe your pattern in the past, I want you to come up with a new way to communicate. I want you to identify areas that, that might, might need to be completely overhauled. And as you round the bases, I want you to be open. Say, hey baby, what do I need to omit? What do I need to change? How can I communicate better? And what do I need to stop doing? I want both of you to ask those questions. And I want you to round the bases and be specific. And don't be angry, be open. What I want you to do when the video stops is I want you to turn to page 15 and I want you to fill out the self-assessment. When you're done filling it out by answering agree or disagree, I want you to circle every statement that you answered in a way that does not match our desired response shown in the right-hand column. And so if you ever answer any of the statements that don't match the desired response, that's an area where you're going to want to round the bases. When you're done with the assessment, you should have a few circled. You may have many, you may have a few. If you don't have any circled at all, and you're that healthy, then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write down two or three areas in your relationship that you would like to see improved regarding communication. You can at least come up with a couple. Even the healthiest of marriages has plenty of room for improvement. So I'd like you to write down a few areas that you would like to improve and you're going to round the bases with those areas. Then I want you to go to the next page and I want you to round the bases with every item that you circled. And you're going to have about 15 minutes to round the bases and if you both circled the same item, fine, you're going to round the bases and try to solve it together. If only one of you circled an item, you still need to round the bases because an issue for one of you needs to be addressed by both of you. And so it doesn't matter if either one of you circled an area, you're going to want to round the bases with it to come up with a solution. If you both circled it, certainly you're going to want to round the bases. And you're going to score and you're going to write down your commitments on the following page. And I even have some specific guidelines here to guide you around the bases once again in the event that you might forget what exactly to do. So number one, it says, with each statement from your survey, which one would you like to address? Share with your partner why you answered this way. Third base, specifically, would you like to see your partner do different? Write down your commitments and what you can agree to. As we wrap up the second inning on communication, I want to remind you that every inning finishes by reminding you to go home and continue rounding the bases. And remember that if you don't have time to get to some of the statements that you circled, don't fret over that. Uh, this process is not designed for you to resolve and solve everything. It's to equip you and to train you. And then we're going to move on to the next inning. And we're going to go a little deeper. And we're going to move on to the next inning. But all the items that are left over that you didn't have time to work on, I want you to flush all that out over the next three or four months. Take your time. And we're in no hurry. We're in no rush. Also, on page 19, I'm going to be giving you some homework. At the end of every inning, there will be more homework assignments. Please take them very serious. Go home. Continue to flush out this content and rounding the bases and new ideas on how to strengthen your marriage. Homework is important. It's action-driven. It'll drive you closer to each other. Take it very seriously. It says invest in the relationship by spending time doing the following exercise. Husbands, write down 10 reasons you love your wife. What are 10 things about her that you love, that you loved when you met her, that you loved when you married her, that you love right now? Ladies, you write down 10 reasons you respect your husband. And then when you're all done, exchange your two lists on a date night.
and just take your time and read them. You might want to read them out loud and enjoy that. We also have a tool on our website called Discovery Cards. They're date night cards. There are 52 cards in a deck and it's not a game. These are simply questions that you're going to ask each other on a date. And there are four questions on each card and they range all over from things that are silly, fun, serious, things in your past, things in your present, and things in your future. And the reason why we designed this is to help couples communicate about things other than parenting, bills, job, some of the ruts that we get into in marriage. And you can order those online at daretobedifferent.com. One last thing, before you start rounding the bases, I want you both to share one thing about the other person that you love or respect. Take a couple minutes, start with something positive, be honest about it, be earnest, and then dive into rounding the bases with the issues and the concerns that comes from your survey. I look forward to seeing you in the next inning.